stories by the end of this video, make sure to let me know because I feel like we could do urban legends from around the world because they're usually like super creepy but also super interesting. Now, for all my American viewers, maybe you recognize some of these stories, maybe you are familiar with some of them, maybe some of these stories are from your area that you live in. If so, please let me know in the comments below, I would love to read about it. Now, with that being said, and of course, as always, without any further ado, let's, 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 let's get into tonight's stories, shall we? Alrighty, so the first urban legend that I've got for you guys is one from the state of Alabama and this urban legend is about Hell's Gate Bridge. So in Oxford in Alabama there is a bridge called Hell's Gate Bridge and it comes with its very own urban legends associated with it. So the generally accepted story about this bridge took place in the 1950s, so quite a while ago. Now, supposedly a young couple was driving their car over it and suddenly, for some reason, they drove their car off the bridge. Now the car ended up in the water and the couple tragically drowned. Ever since then, ever since this tragic accident, there are two legends that are associated with Hell's Gate Bridge. Now, according to the first legend, if you drive your car up the bridge at night and then stop smack bang in the middle of the bridge and turn off your lights, the drown couple will appear inside your car on the back seat. Even worse, it is said that those two leave behind wet patches on the seat as some sort of twisted souvenir. That was the first legend, but the second one is the entire reason that the bridge got its spooky name in the first place. So this one also involves driving your car up the bridge. So apparently if you do so and you look over your shoulder halfway through, the scenery behind you changes and essentially becomes like a portal to hell engulfed in flames. Ghost hunters and to the test. So much that Hell's Gate Bridge is now in such disrepair that it's completely closed to any type of visitors. Now at this point, even walking across the bridge is strongly discouraged because it could potentially be dangerous. Urban legends out. Do not put them to the test. 
is one from Alaska and it takes place inside the Alaskan Triangle. Now, you may have heard of the Bermuda Triangle, where ships and planes just completely disappear off of the radar, never to be found again. But have you heard of the Alaskan Triangle? This info is 100% legit, okay? So on average, five people out of a thousand go missing in Alaska, which is twice the national missing persons average. That is wild. Since 1988, which is not that long ago, an astonishing 16,000 people have gone missing inside the Alaskan Triangle, including airplane passengers, locals, hikers, and tourists. 16,000. Now, science says that it's the vast wilderness that makes it easy for people to get lost and go missing in this area, but the Tlingit tribe live in Juno are convinced that there's something else going on. Now, according to this legend, this area, the, the Alaskan Triangle area, is actually inhabited by the Kushtaka. Now, Kushtaka literally means land otter man, and that's because of these creatures' alleged ability shapeshift. They're half otter and half human, which in and of itself already sounds terrifying, right? Now these creatures, according to this tribe, are notorious for imitating the cries of a baby or the screams of a woman in distress. Now they do this to lure their victims to the river because they want to come help and then when they get to the river, they either get drowned or the Kashtaka steal their human spirit or they turn them into another Kashtaka. Like vampires. That is wild. Or werewolves. Wow. I mean, it doesn't necessarily specify Kashtaka can turn somebody into another Kashtaka, but I'm assuming it's with a bite, because that's how it works with vampires and with werewolves and other zombie-like creatures from games and TV shows. So I'm assuming that the Kashtaka has to bite a human in order to turn it into a new Kashtaka, which is terrifying. And I'd rather not think about that. I mean, maybe it involves some other ritual other than biting, but I don't even want to know about that. There's something so inherently scary and creepy about these entities or creatures who can mimic human voices exactly. It's been used in like many films and games where people are getting taunted by something supernatural and then these creatures or entities are able to perfectly mimic the voices of their loved ones to then pretend that they're in distress so the person would come to help them. And that's never a good plan because that just lulls the person into the trap. Yeah, it's something that is used a lot in like scary stories, films, games. They must get their inspiration somewhere, right? This must have happened. I mean, can't make that shit up. So yeah, the Kushtaka, the otter people. Very, like, it's so weird because an otter is not an inherently scary animal. 
it's not like half shark, half human, but but something about the thought of a half otter, half human just does not compute in my brain. Like that, those two things seem mutually exclusive. It's just a weird, like a strange vision that I have of them, and uh, and it's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. that situation or not, you should always help them. 
watched my previous video, you will most likely know what I am talking about. <laughs> and if you don't help them, there is always a risk that they become a ghost and then they haunt you for the rest of your life. And that is never ever the best option to choose. So just be responsible and avoid hauntings. swam in the lake 
honestly, I would love to meet the person who thought it was a good idea to just cover up those towns with water rather than demolishing everything. That is some bad mojo if ever I've encountered some. Like that is possibly one of the stupidest ideas that I have ever heard. Who does that? And see, what is not clear to me is if you are swimming in this Lake Lanier, it is 100% definite that you know that all of that is under you. But I'm wondering, can you also see it? Like, is the water clear enough to see it without, like, actually diving down to it? That's what I want to know. Like, how deep is this lake? I don't know that. So if you are, like, swimming with goggles, can you see it? Is it clear enough? Man, that would be a massive no from me. Although, to be fair, now that I am thinking about it, I think if you can't see what's under you, but you know it's there, that might be even scarier than actually being able to see it, because that's what makes swimming in the deep ocean so scary, because everything under you is so dark, and you don't know what's lurking in those shadows. I don't know if your immediate thoughts go to, there's probably going to be a shark here, or whether they go to, like, monsters of the deep sea, like, unknown creatures yet to be discovered. I mean, that, that would probably be scarier if you can't see the town underneath, I reckon. But man, that is the stupidest, stupidest idea that I've ever heard. And, I mean, you can't avoid if you are literally gonna put cemeteries underwater. How are you gonna avoid bad vibes, bad mojo? I mean, no, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. You don't avoid that. But I mean, don't go swimming in that lake, you guys. Don't do it. No, I don't approve of going swimming in this lake. Can't imagine the water being very healthy either. If like, it is like, there's literally an entire town in it. Like, I can't see this water being very healthy or clean or anything of the sorts. So, I mean, if the ghost arms and legs touching you is not a problem for you, then maybe you should still reconsider doing it because of probably the poor quality of this water. Like, that sounds like a health hazard. in 
inside it.
Bye.